Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at two different things at the same time. The first is how a range of synthetic whetstone grits compare to a range of natural whetstones. Uh, try to dispel some of the myths that go along with that, get the perspective of that down in a appropriate way. And secondarily, of course, we'll be running through all of these synthetic stones so in a way, it'll function as a review for those as well. I don't intend to cover uh, many synthetic whetstones. This may be one of the only times that we really take an in-depth look at it. But uh, if we're trying to make some determinations between how do these synthetic whetstones perform, how do common, I tried to pick the most common, natural whetstones uh, that people might be talking about or interested in or hardness, fineness levels, and often a question that comes up is, you know, what grit is this particular whetstone? What grit is this one? And people really would like to see a synthetic grit ascribed to them. So the first thing that we'll get out of the video is you'll be able to make that comparison yourself. You'll be able to see on the screen how synonymous you think the ascribed grit is. Uh, but also, as we run through that process, you will be able to understand how that's a very difficult thing to do, how it's very hard to take a natural whetstone and say it is this great, this great, this great, because it doesn't look the same, <clears throat> it does not perform the same. Uh, so before we jump into that, another disclaimer that's worthwhile on this topic is with natural whetstones, how they perform when you polish oftentimes functions differently than how you perform than how they perform when you sharpen. So I think when you hear people say, uh, you know, an Izu is a 2K, 3K stone, um, that is coming, I, I think, often from the perspective of sharpening, of what type of edge does the stone leave on a knife, which is a super subjective frame of reference, right? Essentially, you're taking the knife and all you're doing is feeling the edge and trying to say, oh, that toothiness or that smoothness feels like a 6K stone. You know, there's really no basis for <clears throat> reference point. It's, it's all guesswork. Now, when we look at these natural whetstones and try to ascribe an analogous grit from a polishing perspective, it's no less opinionated, right? We're going to be taking a look at a scratch pattern of a natural stone, which will be on, on one side of the knife, and then we will look at a synthetic stone that I'll put on the other side of the knife, and then we can compare the two. What I think often happens here, when I've done this on my own, is the grit that various people try to ascribe to these natural stones is always low. Uh, you know, this is an Igarashi. A lot of people will say this is an analogous 1K stone. Maybe it gives you an edge that's in the range of a 800 to 3K on the tooth, right? However you feel the toothiness is. It, it could be anywhere in that range, just subjective, I guess, about your thumb, what you think that feels like. But we can tell you the scratch pattern of it probably is not, you will find, is not going to be analogous to a, a 1K. <clears throat> it's going to be higher, and the Aizu is going to be higher, the T Tushima is going to be higher. That will be a thing we see throughout this process, that when you're polishing, mm, some of those established grit ratings you often see float around might not be as accurate as they could be. Now, that's really difficult, right? Because when people ask for an analogous grit rating, are, are you talking sharpening? Are you talking polishing? you know, usually people just want to describe a grit rating and move on. And this is why when you start digging into natural whetstones, the actual answer to what grit are all of these stones is don't do it. Don't ascribe a grit to them. Um, because how you use it can change it, right? <clears throat> if we refresh the surface of this Tushima Nagara often, it'll be more coarse. If we don't refresh it and we let it burnish a little bit where the surface starts to exhaust. It means the particles, the abrasive particles that are being presented in the surface of the stone as the knife 
runs across them are slowly being worn down or smoothed out. This will perform much finer than it would if we used it with a bunch of slurry and a, a properly refreshed, or not properly, but a newly refreshed surface. That is a very different process for each of these natural whetstones than any of these synthetics do. The synthetics don't burnish. They either cut well or don't cut well, but their grit performs like their grit performs. Um, the grit inside of them is a lot more aggressive, it's a lot more durable, and it does not give or round out when the knife moves across it. So <clears throat> when we talk about these stones, uh, when we talk about natural wet stones, the fact that the surface slowly becomes finer and finer, exhausts, it, it becomes less aggressive, allows for a much greater range of the stone. You know, with that said, when we ascribe a grit rating to an Izu, do I ascribe it only at its coarsest with slurry? Or do I ascribe it at the middle level of it being worn in? Or do I ascribe it at the end level of it being worn in? So that is one thing that makes this a really difficult process to give someone a number so that they can catalog the stone in their minds and move on. And if you've looked over naturalwetstones.com, right, I, I give usually grit ranges. I say, well, it's, you know, somewhere between a 3 to 5k. <clears throat> and to me, that's not even an exhaustive range. It's going to be a range of the average common specimen in the average range of use. It's not the coarsest. If, well, I used an Izu conceptually for that 3 to 5k. You could make an Izu perform coarser than a 3k, but you're probably not usually going to, it's probably not going to perform below a 3k for very long, it'll eventually get into its comfort zone. Uh, and most examples will be in the 3 to 5k range. Consequently, you can take a finer Izu, really work the surface, use a light touch, burnish it, and you might be able to get past a 5k. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. The process here will be to try to present these in that average concept, in just I'm going to try to make each of these whetstones perform averagely, and as such, hopefully present a clear, somewhat accurate representation. Um, all these stones, specifically these synthetics, <clears throat> will require soaking, uh, so we will have to soak before the video can really begin, and realistically all of these naturals that we have here today do benefit from some soaking. Now, I might soak these for two hours, uh, I might soak these for 15 minutes. So, you know, that is always another thing that comes up is the synthetic stones are not going to be nearly as affected at almost perma soaking. I, I don't, stone to stone, you should be careful about that still. But these are all kings, king whetstones. Uh, they will be fine being soaked for a very long time. Generally speaking, the natural whetstones here are all so sealed on the sides and back. They probably could be soaked for quite a while, but I do get hesitant after, um, you know, if I was doing it for hours and hours. Your mileage may vary based on stone, temperature you soak it in, so on and so forth. So uh, before we get into the soaking period and we, we jump into things, uh, let's take a look at our knife polish first. As always, it's good to take a look at this and see what we're working with. And this is done to a level that I expect to be over what we're gonna be looking at. Um, our stones today to take a look at are 8K down to 300, and our analogous natural grit rating are a lot of two stones that many people would say are 6K to 8K to 10K. You will be able to judge for yourselves, but probably makes, you know, we have one that's on the finer end of that spectrum, 8K plus. We have one on the lower end of that spectrum, 6 to 8K, again, by how most people call it. I'm not sure I agree with that. We'll see it on video. We have a a Tsushima at 6K-ish, 4 to 6K, and Aizu at 3 to 5K, and Igarashi at 1 to 2K, and then Anatsuya at 800 to 1K. So you'll see how all of these compare. Sorry, let's go. So the point that I was making is that this is done to a higher level than 8K, and we'll be working um, from a high grit to a low grit, so that I don't want to go back, you know. So we'll start at our Awasado finishing stones, we'll start at our 8K synthetic, 
and then we'll be working down through the process. So the goal here was I finished it above what I thought that was, and um, that way we will see each step without rogue scratches to the best of my ability, and then we'll be able to tell um, what each stone is doing. Then we'll have one side that's a natural, we'll have one side that's synthetic, and I'll just flip the blade around and show you what it looks like. <clears throat> So I ran through these already pretty much. Uh, these are, this is about a four out of five Hakka Tomai. Um, this is a three out of five uh, Takashima, and they're, they're both Tomai. And then we already covered what these were, which I'll reintroduce them again as we go through. On our King Whetstone side of things, and, and before I get into the actual stones, I guess, the first question to be, well, why am I, why am I using King Whetstones. Um, there's a few reasons. First, it was something I was able to trade for the range of. That plays a role in it. Um, but the second <clears throat> is that King Whetstones are, of course, graded in a manner that King decides, just as Naniwa does their Whetstones how they decide. Um, Japanese vendors tend to go off of the Japanese scale. Some other vendors, uh, Norton, Sharpton, Shapton, uh, goes off of the American scale, and those things are a little different. A Shapton 16K is like a Naniwa 10 to 12K, you know, because they're using different scales. But even if you take a King 1000 and compare it to a Naniwa 1000, they tend to be different. Uh, for instance, I believe a Naniwa has a reputation of being a higher grit than the king is of an analogous grit rating. So when we look at our 8k king, it might be more, it might be a little below the Naniwa 8k. But that also ranges. Um, there are going to be stone vendors who are below king, even on the Japanese scale, at the same grit rating. So uh, I did some research and I felt walking away from that that the king was a decent middle ground of what the grit should look like when you compare the spectrum of stones. So not only could I get uh, the majority of this range through a trade, but I also felt it did a good job where we're trying to shoot, even with these natural stones, for averages. You know, I think these stones provide a good average use. They're common stones. Uh, they're not difficult to find. Really, for natural stones, they're not difficult to find. <clears throat> and they'll provide us a good base average line. The same is true here. These are easy to find stones, they're accessible, they kind of fall in the middle of the pack when we talk about what their grit ratings are analogous to, and I think that gives us a good reference point. Uh, and then you can extrapolate a little bit from there. Of course, that variance even in synthetic stones makes this process of saying, oh, uh, an Aizu is a 3 to 5k, even more confusing, right? Is it a 3 to 5k on the American scale, on the Japanese scale, and for what synthetic stone manufacturer? You know, that is furthering why many people just say, don't even worry about the grit when you're talking about natural stones, right? Think of them as coarse, medium finishing stones. But I know we all want to try to put a grit rating, you know, so you don't feel like you're jumping into the unknown, which is part of the goal today. <clears throat> so our king stones, we'll start from the way that we'll use them. This is the 8K, it's called a G3. Uh, these are all their super stones. And then we have three hypers and then just two of the standard deluxes at the end. So this is an 8K, um, it's a pretty decent stone, and we'll talk about it more when I use it. We have the S3, which is a King 6K, um, and all these stones will be soaked, but these three super stones, the smaller ones, uh, don't need to be soaked for nearly as long. And then we have the King F3, which is a 4K stone. I know a lot of people tend not to like the these two, the S3 and the F3. I think a lot of that comes down to uh, them not being used with slurry. Unlike many other stones, these perform much better, and even the AK to a degree with slurry, it does not make them any coarser, but it keeps the pores from clogging, and it keeps them cutting better. So uh, if you've ever heard people dislike these, um, you know, they're probably not None of these are probably the best absolute stone in their category, though maybe the 1 and 2K hypers are, are really competitive. Um, but, you know, often it's important to use the stone in a way that it 
will function well, and King often has focused on trying to make their stones perform a little like natural whetstones, and you would use slurry in the later stage of things. Anyway, uh, onward we have the uh, King 2000 Hyper. I really like this stone. They are a little, this is the hardest out of the pack to find, uh, but you can, you'll just probably, I was looking around to see what, you know, how accessible are these stones for you guys. Uh, I think you'll have to get this one from, shipped in from Japan. This one, the, the King 4000 F3, could be hard to find. Uh, if you're looking for a King F3, often you'll find it from what I was seeing in an F3X format, where it's glued onto a, pl a plastic base. I, I did not want that, and I'm glad that the person who traded this um, had it in this format, and I asked them where they got it. And this is actually the Ice Bear 4000, which if you know of them, they're a king brand, and a, that seems to be the easiest way to get this 4000 uh, without a base. So if you're looking for that, look for the Ice Bear brand. So we go on to the King Hyper 1000. Uh, this is the standard King Hyper 1000 that you'll find if you are just shopping around in any market. Um, it's a good stone, it's rather hard. You know, a, a King has a reputation for their older stones, like this 800 Deluxe, of being really soft, which I've used the old Deluxe 1000 before, and it is a very soft stone, like an Alto. But this is a hard stone for sure, it wears well, it feels very modern, it feels like a very modern stone. Um, and here we also have a different King 1000 Deluxe, you can see the color difference between the two. The harder has a little bit more traditional um, salmon, I guess, salmon color to it. This 1000 is a different version, it's actually the soft uh, version that's better, supposed to be better for polishing. I'll run through both of them. Uh, I do like the soft one better for polishing, but of course, when it's softer, if you're doing a lot of work, you have to refresh it faster. So, you know, pros and cons. That's the end of the Hyper line. It ends at the 1000. So we do have an 800 Deluxe. Uh, to be honest, I find that the 800 Deluxe and the 1000 Deluxe are really hard to tell apart. Um, you know, but that makes sense. They're pretty close anyway. So we'll take a look at that. And then we have, at the end, with, with no natural um, comparison that I own anymore. You know, I've, I've traded off any of the coarser stones I used to have. We have a King 300, and I will also pull out the 140 diamond plate to just show the coarsest. So at this 800 step, we will have the last um, natural comparison, and then we'll just go down to 300 and down to 140 so you guys can see right what it looks like, because we might as well if we're doing the full spectrum. So I'm going to go ahead and get these synthetic stones soaking, and then I'll, I'll uh, right before the video, about 10 to 15 minutes out, I'll soak these two, and then, you know, between all the steps, we'll soak all of these as appropriate. So uh, we'll get into it. For the sake of showing you guys, take a look at how much water this 2K absorbs. It has like an effervescence about it. Uh, all the kings will do this, but I find that the 2K Hyper in particular is a very thirsty stone and it's a pretty interesting here. Maybe you can hear it. Alright, so as we discussed, we've been letting the stone soak. I do know that in the first part of things, I said that I was going to let the kings soak for like an hour or two, and I did, um, but I did feel it was important, given that part of this is kind of going over how the king stones work as well, that you don't have to soak them for that long. Maybe five to ten minutes is good for most applications. I do find that some of them do want to be soaked for a little while longer. Particularly the deluxe versions, like the 800, really do enjoy being soaked for longer than 5 to 10 minutes. But the vast majority of them are good enough uh, to just soak for that little bit of time. I tend to do the two hours because I really don't want the stone to dry up at all. I want it to be fully ready. And uh, it just makes sure that it's easier to do, given that shooting these videos takes a lot of time. I'd rather just soak them for a long time and then not have to worry about it. So keep that in mind. So here we have the King 8000 uh, G3, and we'll be sharpening, I suppose, this side of it. And for this first one, we can do at least a comparison of the two. All right. 
And actually, yeah. This one I know you can kind of do with slurry or without slurry, but I'll try to keep it consistent. Let's go ahead and make some slurry. In this case, I'm going to use a natural nagara I have here. This is a very hard nagara. It's going to provide nothing on top of this. It's just going to pull up the base stone. And as I kind of had said before, I do think these super stones benefit a little bit from just some starting slurry there. All right, let's get to it. Well, you might have been able to see when we first started using the stone, it'll load up a little bit, like right there. Um, and if we didn't have our slurry here for these super stones, it's a lot more likely that that load up would continue. And then you'd find the stone in that area wasn't cutting the same as the rest of it. But that little bit of slurry, like with a natural stone, helps to remove the metal, coal, the metal particles from the pores of the stone and keep that surface working the way that we want. Nice and refreshed. Alright, let's see if that's good enough or if we really could use another round or two, and I think that's good. So here's what we can see the King 8K has brought to the table. Just one second. Actually, I'm going to go a round or two more just to get it a little further along. Make sure that we have as accurate of an example here as possible. I don't really find that the slurry on these stones uh, coarsens it up, but I also felt like maybe it was nice for you guys to see how the stone acts without slurry. And it's also never bad to just spend a little bit more time on the stone, get a more even polish. So you can see that this uh, the G3 does a pretty decent job of starting its own slurry find it's the other two, the 6K and the 4K, that really suffer from load up if you don't start a little bit of slurry on them, particularly the 4K. Alright, let's see what we're working with. Evenness in the heel. So I'm going to take care of that.
right, I think this is good enough for our evaluation here. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what the King G3 8K has provided for our sample 8K polish. So we have shallow but pretty visibly present scratches, primarily on the cladding. The core steel does have a little bit of scratches left, but uh, not too much. The cladding itself is pretty frosty, you know, looking if you go with that terminology. It's cleaner and brighter in color rather than a haze. But we have a very clear, still present scratch pattern shown. And if we present that to the previous finish side, you should be able to see a pretty stark difference there. All right. So that is our King G3. And again, a 8K representation of what you get. So now we'll go ahead and switch over to our finest natural that some people would say is within the 8K range. This is a softer uh, four out of five stone is generally how most people would call it, maybe. It's a 3.5 out of 5 by other people's ratings. As we've discussed in the past, it's um, a little arbitrary, right? It's up to the individual to decide, do I think this is a 4 stone? Do I think it's a 3.5? On natural wet stones, I do have a chart kind of that I put together. But even that has uh, a range to it. So, um, you know, even I can't tell you for sure that what you're looking at is going to be a certain thing, and generally speaking, it just takes some experience to be able to determine. All right, so again, we'll take a look at our last pre-polish here, and we'll get to the stone. Never know what's going to happen on camera, I suppose, but I would bet based on experience with the stone in the past we're going to feel like it comes out above that 8K level. But that's kind of the point of this, is that there's a good chance if I sharpened on that 8K, well, still maybe not for me, but many people who would sharpen on that 8K might come back from it feeling the edge with their thumb, and then use this stone and sharpen with it and feel the edge with their thumb and go, oh, those are comparable. So this Hakotoma is around an 8K stone, or four out of five stones are around an 8K stone. Um, I often find, I think that's, you know, a little, not, I don't, obviously nobody's gonna always agree with other people's ratings. Anyway, let's see what we get. One more round here. This is a really great stone. Uh, hackers are a little hard to find, hackers, but um, the two that I have I really like. This one is my preferred one of the two. That's good enough. This uh, this side of the knife above the heel uh, has never been 
really properly prepared to get the most ideal equal polish, so we'll just have to identify that manually and say, hey, don't don't consider that area as part of uh, what the hacker did. So that's okay. So here's our result. And this area is what I'm talking about. You're just going to ignore this area. So yeah, comparing this, which this is again a 3.5 to 4 out of 5 Awasato, to this, you're going to get a lot of people who say this is a 8K stone. Maybe if we sharpen with it, oh sorry, I didn't realize this had a little bit of residue left over during our re-review re there. Right, so, if we look at this. this. So I mean, you, a case could be made that maybe even though the core cladding here has a little bit of scratches left, and the core cladding here really doesn't, it's very hazy. They're about the same um, pitch, if you want to call it that. They're the same warmth in polish, so maybe that edge is going to come out similar feeling if, if we sharpened with them. but. This is where a lot of this comes in, that if you're looking at this for polishing, and someone told you, hey, this is an 8K stone, and then you bought it, and you polished with it, you would you would be like, they're insane. That is not an 8K stone. This is well above that. So um, this is our first example, and we'll see that reinforced as we go through. But here is a 4 out of 5 Awasato compared to a 8K synthetic. Now let's move down to a 3 out of 5 Awasato. This would be a, a 3 or maybe even a, a 2.5. It's a pretty soft stone um, and it'll mud a bit faster than you'll see it slurry. I think I would I would personally call it a 3. Um, but it's a very fast cutting 3 so it kind of keeps up with its own self muddying. Uh, 2.5 stones in my opinion the mud should be generating faster than the swarf, so it ends up being more muddy than anything else. So let's see what we get here. Again, here's our starting now, which is that previous Haka, 4 out of 5. And this is a Takashima Tomai. And you will be able to see a difference for sure. There, I mean, of course, there is a difference when we're moving from a, a 3.54 stone to a 2.53 stone. I'm just got to wait for the water to evaporate here. And here's what we are looking at. So we have a bit more of a pronounced scratch pattern on the cladding. And we do have a little bit more scratching on the core steel. Still a very nice Kasumi finish. And I would say it's still most certainly a step up in a real way from the 8K. But similarly, if we're sharpening, and we weren't looking at any scratch pattern under a loop, we were just feeling it on our thumb, you know, we would say, oh, you know, maybe they're co comparable. And that is the flaw of looking at that. So if we use this as an example for polishing, you might say that 3 out of 5 stone we just used is a 10k stone. But n nobody's going to usually reference a f 3 out of 5 Awasato as a 10k stone. 
And that's where the dis discrepancy comes in. So moving forward, I'll drop that narrative a little bit and we'll just take a look at, you know, the synthetic stone and then a stone that people usually say is supposed to exist at that level. And then you can draw your own conclusions. So let's go ahead and get this swapped out for our next um, King Synthetic, which will be our 6K. All right, so here we have our King um, S3, which is the 6K version of their Superstone. I suppose um, what we'll do is uh, I will start with no slurry, and then if the stone demonstrates it needs it, we'll I'll go ahead and add it. All right, so uh, we're going to go ahead and use our synthetic side here. This metal is fairly reactive, so you're going to see some water spots, but it still gives us an idea where we're at. Let's get started. You can already see it's a little different than the 8K. It's cutting faster, uh, but it's a bit more thirsty when we put it like this through its paces. Versus the 8K, I think I did add a little water, but it wasn't so soon in the process. Thus far, we've been able to avoid any uh, pore clogging even without the initial starting slurry, so that's nice. It's not a bad feeling stone. Just like the 8K was not a bad feeling stone either. One more run over with it. And just a little heel cleanup. All right, there's probably another area we could have cleaned up here, but it's not gonna be a poor representation of the scratch pattern. You'll see it, it's not a big deal. All right, we're just letting the last little bit of water there evaporate away. And here's what we are left with. Let me try to get it with a towel. So it definitely has a more pronounced scratch pattern. Here's the area I could have cleaned up more, but we're, we're all right. It has a more pronounced scratch pattern than the 8K did. Um, 
maybe more difficult to see on camera, but I can definitely see way more scratching in the core. Um, the cladding looks fairly similar. Um, the scratch pattern looks about similarly spaced, but I can tell visually, maybe you can on the camera too, that some of those scratches are deeper than the 8K scratches was. But definitely the major addition when you look at the two that shows up here is the scratches on the core steel are showing much more prevalently than they were. All right, so let's move on to our Shima Nagara. So I have not had this soaking, but um, while the Tushima Nagara benefits a bit from soaking, it's not entirely necessary for it. Uh, the stone will suck up a little bit, so we'll just give it a second or two here while I get the Aizu soaking. Um, and you can see that it is sucked up some water, and it'll soften up a little bit if we soak it for a pretty long period of time. However, again, uh, you know, if we're just going off of average use, uh, I don't think that is probably average use. I don't think most people are going to soak their Tushima Nagara for a really long period of time. It generally just doesn't need it. And many people quote uh, Tushima Nagara uh, in that 5 to 6K range. So, um, you know, this is why it's being compared to that King S3 which is a 6K stone, or marketed as a 6K stone. And we'll see what it gives us. And we will do, be doing it, of course, on our natural whetstone side, which, you know, last uh, item on that, last whetstone on that was the Takashima 2.5 to 3 out of 5. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Add some water here. Okay, I think that's good enough for us to use. And uh, that stone usually benefits a little bit from a slurry creation, but it wasn't too bad. So here, try to get it dried off a little bit. All right, here is our Tushima Nagara scratch pattern. Compared to the 6K King, which again, this unevenness can be ignored. Um, I could have just spent a little bit more time on the stone. There's a chance it was a side corner that just needed to be knocked off. But what we're looking at is how frosty kind of the cladding looks the polish pitch if you want to call it that of the core and how deep those scratches are compared to the Tushima 
once again here, I mean, the Tushima is far closer to that 8K stone than it is this 6K. And uh, you're always going to see usually just a more shallow scratch pattern on a natural stone, but what you're looking for is how close the scratches are and how deep. And there's no doubt that this one has a, a wider scratch pattern that is considerably deeper versus this one. We are seeing scratches on the cladding and on the core steel. Um, they're still more shallow and more in line with what the 8K was, though it's still quite a bit more shallow than the 8K. Similarly though, if we sharpened with this, people would find that the edge is potentially toothier than an 8K. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and now move on to the next king, which will be the King 4K. So we have the King F3, which is again, that 4,000 grit whetstone, and the easiest way to get it is uh, under the Ice Bear, Ice Bear brand, which is a king brand. It's you know, as you can see, it's marked as a king, as any other king whetstone. So here's what we're working with here. This is that King S3 6,000 scratch pattern and polish. Let's see what the 4K gives to us. You can see when you look at the <clears throat> use of the G3, S3, and then this F3, they all perform pretty differently. The binder gives up a little different. They cut definitely at different speeds. I think the 6000 is actually a little faster than this 4000, but the 4000, I think, muddies the fastest compared to all of them. And this one is the most thirsty for sure. All right, let's see what we got. We'll do another pass.
All right. <clears throat> I'm going to call that good enough. There's one area right below the Shinogi line that could be better, but I'm not going to try to hunt that down right now. So we can see it looks considerably different than the previous two King whetstones. We have a lot more haze in it in general. Um, the scratches are still certainly pronounced. We have less of them that we can readily see, but the ones that are there are still deeper than the 4K. Um, but it is closer to a, a more standard Kasumi finish, realistically. I don't think it's particularly pleasant looking, but you can see that they are impacting the steel differently. Now we'll go ahead and switch over to our Aizu. The Aizu is typically considered by many people a 3 to 5k stone. So given that that was a 4k, if that was a purely accurate assessment, it should in theory land right around, right around that. Per the last two synthetic stones we've compared though, I'm sure you can already tell that it may not be exactly that way. So I do know from experience um, that this stone will definitely benefit from some slurry generation. So I'm going to use that really hard nogger again. Just get some slurry up. All right, so we'll look at our before, which is the Tushima the uh, Tushima Nagara step. And we will now go down to the Aizu and see how that affects it. And on all of these stones, as I kind of had said at the very beginning, if you really keep working them for longer than I'm doing, you can get these natural stones to start, what's called burnishing. You can usually tell if it's burnishing um, because it, the cutting speed slows down some and the surface at an angle with the light will look extra reflective than normal. Like, not metal reflective, but um, how they have a sheen kind of glassy on it. And when that's the case, you are starting to smooth out the abrasive particles that are presented on the surface of the stone and the stone actually will go to an even finer level. Things like the Haka and the Takashima are fine enough, or, or sorry, are soft enough that that really doesn't happen a whole lot. The Tushima Nagara and this Aizu, um, though slowly, will burnish over time. And really you want something that does that slow burnishing because you still get cutting performance out of it all the while but you can, uh, you know, have them kind of swing above their weight for fineness if you really want to. And that's one of the things that makes both of those pretty great sharpening stones for knives because you can work the stone, it starts off aggressive, it, it helps you to set your, yourself up for success, and then it starts burnishing while continuing to cut and allows you to push that knife into a little bit finer area. The same principle can play out for polishing, that if I kept working this, especially if I cleared the slurry off and then reworked and already somewhat worked at a uh, surface, we would find it could really go above the results we're going to get right now, especially brighten it, it'd be a little bit brighter and myri more mirrored looking, still have scratches for sure, but it would head in that direction. But again, we're looking for kind of average performance which is what we have here, so good.
Now, of course, so far it has seemed like, you know, that at every step you'd rather have the natural stone than the synthetic stone, because the naturals are still cutting pretty fast, as we're seeing, and uh, they're finer at the same comparable step. It is, of course, important to realize, though, that this is still not cutting as fast as that 4K was. Everything, like, even though these natural stones that I have are fast versions of them, uh, they're still not going to cut as fast. They would require more surface conditioning if we weren't working down from a really nice polish to a, you know, because we're going the opposite direction. Usually you're trying to delete the previous scratches, and, you know, we do have to refresh this more for the sake of refreshing, not just flattening. Synthetic stones, you don't have to refresh to get them to cut faster, but you do have to flatten them. So you're kind of playing on both ends. You'll get the same job done faster, though, with the synthetic stones, but of course we're seeing some, some trade-offs still. So I'm going to move this out of the way, because it's a, it's a big stone. So here's what we got with our iZoo. And to me, how we looked at the Taka, or not the Takashima, how we looked at the Tushima, and, you know, I walk away from that feeling like this looks a lot like the 8K finish did, but cleaner, you know, just tighter, but still about the same. Um, to me, this feels the same way here, that it's less like the 4K stone and more like the 8K stone. I'm sorry, 6K stone. So the Tushima, which is usually built as a 6K, seems more comparable polishing to the 8K, the Izu, which is usually billed at around a 4K, seems more like a 6K here. And even then it might be a tiny bit finer, but it's up to you to decide. And uh, just for comparison, here is our 6K polish. I'm sorry, man, I'm getting it wrong. Here's our 4K polish. compared to our Izu polish. I will say I do maybe feel like these at least visually look a little closer than the previous two steps, but hopefully you guys are able to see. The scratches on this are still much more shallow, are much less prevalent on the core steel, though there, and just visually I can tell it's not as deep, which is of course usually how we're going to rate those things. That if the scratch pattern wasn't as pleasant, but the scratches are about the same depth, you know, then it can be kind of said to be comparable. However, I will say, similar to the previous steps, we're getting similar colors on how the steel actually looks for polishing. And that oftentimes can give you some indication about how it would work on the edge of the blade. That's not a very good rule, though. It is, it is true, and it also cannot help you in pulling too much information. So it's kind of a mixed bag. All right, so now we're going to move on to our 2000 grit king stone. And for this stage, between the 2000 and the 1000 grit stone, we actually only have one natural stone to compare against. And that is the Igarashi Igarashi. Uh, I don't I used to have a bin sway that would work. I don't anymore. So, ooh, wrong side. Um, so the bin the Ikarashi is usually considered by some to be more like a 1500. Some will say it's a 1K, some will say it's a 2K. I would say it could be many of those things, depending on how it's conditioned. But again, we're talking application. Uh, sharpening, maybe it is one to 2K. Polishing, well, you may continue to see the theme here follow through. So um, this is the King Hyper 2000 grit. Uh, I do really like this stone. I have, you know, obviously I've tested these before, but out of the whole King lineup, uh, this one and then the softer King 1K Hyper are really good, I think really good stones. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our 4K here. Again, there's going to be some watermarks, just because we, we've we been using it, and I haven't been as diligently drying it off as I could, but it'll still do a fine job of showing us the scratch pattern of our previous F3 King 4000 grit. And now we're going to go to this King Hyper 2000. When you switch between the stones, there is 
going to wet the surface a little bit. There's no doubt that these are made in a different way. That all that the 4K, uh, 6K, and 8K stones are, you know, one process of development. They all smell alike. They have a very strong, old school adhesive smell to them. Uh, smells that remind me of like my grandparents' basement. <laughs> Um, and those type of old solvents or, or something versus this stone is different. You know, it's like the rest of the hypers. I'm not a synthetic stone guru. I believe that this is probably a different type of modern ceramic stone versus the other ones are an older style adhesive based, but would highly suggest you not quote me on that one. But the stone is nice, it does readily slurry here, but uh, it wears in a way different way than the other ones. You know, it gives really nice feedback, it's got a hard surface to it, and a lot of like the nanny, the nanny waz that are above the 2k limit are going to probably be more, more similar to this guy here. But we're, you know, more looking for the grit for our exercise, but this is a pretty Good stone. It's very thirsty though, as we covered before. All right, and it is definitely fast, faster than the other ones, but you would expect that with it being a 2K stone. And it continues our 4K trend here. Just get it dry off a little bit. It continues our 4K trend here and looking more hazy with further deeper scratches added in. It's definitely much more aggressive than the 4K. I mean, you expect it, but you can really see that I feel it takes a step forward in this, you know, 2K step down. You really hit a threshold here in between that 2K and 4K. It's also very hazy, almost on, you know, it's not a desirable level of hazy between the two, and hopefully I can, I'm able to get it. We do have some of these heavier scratches that are really starting to show. That's pretty indicative of the synthetic whetstones. And obviously from a polishing perspective, this stone is never meant to be stopped at. And if you were to sharpen here, um, you're not caring about how nice your bevel looks under a loop or something. You know, the fact that there would be deeper scratches there, uh, you don't really care if you're using that type of stone, you're just looking for functionality at the end of the day. And it, it would definitely do that. So now we have our Ikarashi. I really like the way this one looks. Uh, since the Igarashi video, I've traded off all the other ones, but I've kept this one. And it reminds me of like a mint chocolate chip ice cream or something. It's a pretty cool stone, and it works pretty well too. Um, this one can do pretty decent without slurry. The Aizu that I have is a little uh, harder, so it, it really does like to have some, but we're going to go ahead and just generate it anyway. Just a little bit of time saved on the video isn't going to be a bad thing. All right. And we'll take a look at our Aizu polish one last time. And then we'll see what it's looking like to bump down to the Ikarashi. Ikarashi. It is just one of those words, but the name can be pronounced with a G or a K. So you'll spell it, you'll see it spelled Igarashi, Ikarashi, 
depending on the region of Japan for the person who's turning it phonetically into English. Um, again, this is usually built at around a one, a one and a half to two K, well, one to two K stone. I see a lot of people listed as one K, but um, that's hard to believe, and we'll see why. Even for sharpening, though, I think that's a little dubious. I've read that some people think these stones are slow. Uh, I don't know where that comes from, but they're they're not. I mean, I guess they're not the fastest stones in the world for natural stones, but they are far from slow. I've had some natural stones that are true, you know, truly true snails when it comes to their cutting level. This one is about average. I I don't know where that originates. Well, I do know where it originates from, but I don't know. Maybe they got a bad example of it or something. All right, let's see if we need to go another round. Uh, yeah, let's do one more round. It's looking actually pretty good, but I wouldn't mind. And we off I just often spend more time on the synthetics. Generally speaking, they're more aggressive. Uh, grit, I think, doesn't lend itself as well to a really, really even looking scratch pattern. And I know that if I go longer, I can get it to look a little more even. So I feel in this case, it's never bad to give a natural stone the same opportunity. All right, we're going to call that good enough. So this is definitely... I've seen also some people say that the Igarashi, Igarashi is kind of an Aizu replacement. I mean, if you tried to use this in the finest way possible and your Aizu in the coarsest way possible, maybe you can get to some overlap. But this is definitely a step before. Take a look at it here. We can see a pretty pronounced, but very nice and even scratch pattern in that core steel. And we have, of course, a pronounced uh, but consistent scratch pattern in the cladding. And if we go ahead and compare it to our 2K polish, this is where I really tend to feel like so many people call natural stones 1K stones. and um, it really only applies to sharpening, and I actually often disagree with that as well. But it is important to realize that natural stones differ stone to stone, and that if we're rating a stone category off its worst samples, or kind of, there's a chance that maybe it is lower, right? That this is a good Ikarashi, maybe a bad Ikarashi is different. Um, definitely there's a white Ikarashi that is much more like an 800 to a 1k stone and it has um, holes in it. It's very porous but when we're talking about this you know it's called blue or green Ikarashi or something um, but this color it's in this range. So here is the King Hyper 2000 result. Here is the Ikarashi Ikarashi result. All right, so we are going to move on to the King 1000. And um, this we have two versions of, and for the sake of reviewing all of the things, I'll go ahead and cover both of the versions. So we're going to be starting with the standard King Hyper 1000.
and they are of course very similar. The results tend to be fairly similar. I just think the other one ends up being a little easier to polish with. This one is probably the better sharpening one. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started again. Here's our previous King 2000 Hyper Polish. Let's see what we get with the 1K. This sounds like a 1K. I know that might seem a little weird, but hopefully it comes through on the camera. There's like a certain um, abrasive sound that comes along with the coarser stones. You can really tell between the 1K and the 2K that you've entered into that range. It's a pretty fast cutting stone, as you can see, which is what you want out of this type of stone. And just like the 2K Deluxe, or the 2K Hyper, it is definitely a different uh, composition than the smaller, finer grit Superstones. It is that newer ceramic style or what have you. Definitely wears slower, more evenly. There's more durable altogether. So I will say, if you are here for some reason, you're wondering if the 1K Hyper is similar to the 1K Deluxe in what it produces. Yeah, it is. This is pretty much what I would have always expected to get out of the old, you know, thirsty 1K Deluxes. Is that type of a polish. You just get it faster with less wasted stone, you know, in this one nowadays. So I mean, it's definitely a 1K polish. Um, uh, scratches are a step up in aggressiveness from the 2K. It's also maybe a tad bit less hazy. That 2K is a really hazy stone. This one, the definition is back a little bit between the two. But similarly, you probably would never want to leave a knife here. <clears throat> it looks pretty um, unrefined. And for the sake of it, I mean, we'll take a look. I'll just clean it off. We can compare again to the Ikarashi, but uh, I mean, they're not even going to be remotely in the same ballpark. Um, just being frank about it. If you were transitioning from synthetic stone, so here's the Ikarashi. Here's the 1K. Which again, anyone saying that they are similar or at interchangeable levels are, you know, not polished before. Realistically speaking, if we, if you had a lineup that was Igarashi, Aizu, Tushima, and then early Awasados, um, or, you know, some other version, right? You can put Numata in for Aizu, you can put a Mikawa Nagara in for Tushima, you could put Uchikomori in instead of a softer Tomai, whatever. You get the point. I would work, if with these stones, I would work up to 2K. I would go up to that 2K Hyper, then I would transition to the Ikarashi. I think that's pretty accurate. Um, I don't see, you know, getting a whole lot of value in the polishing world out once you go to that 4K plus in the synthetic. I think you can get that from the Nakatoishi just fine. Of course, you'll... Um, you know, it'll be, I guess it'll be going a little slower with the 
Igarashi, but you also are going to get a shallower scratch pattern. So you're going to spend a good amount of time between the 2000 Hyper and the Igarashi, kind of catching that up. But once you catch it up, though, I think you'll have a better experience for the rest of it moving forward. That is, of course, though, that you have good natural stones. If you have bad natural stones that have rogue particles in them, we might as well just stick to the synthetic until you get to the Awasedo. And I think that's a lot of the reason why you hear people suggest just do synthetic until the very end. We are on to looking at the second King 1000 Hyper. Um, this one is the soft version of it. They do end up feeling rather similar. Um, of course, with this one being the soft version, it does need to be flattened more during use, but consequently, uh, it being flat ends up, or not flat, it being softer ends up allowing it to polish a little easier for us. It's just more forgiving. So we'll see. Um, last time I tested this out, I don't remember there being a huge difference, but we are here to take a look at the different synthetics, I guess, as much as anything else. So let's go ahead and take a look at the King 1000 Hard, 1000 Hyper Hard version, or standard version, and then we'll do the soft here. I feel that the Hyper 2000 uh, uses the same soft binder or construction that this one has. That their feedback under the blade feels very similar, um, whereas the King, the standard King 1000 Hyper, feels harder than the both of them. And of course we can still take a look at it here. Maybe it's a tiny bit more coarse than the hard 1000, but I think that the finish we got is pretty comparable. And then again, even though I don't feel it's the best comparison, or I don't feel that they are actually synonymous, we can take a look at the King 1000 soft versus the Ikarashi. All right, so we've been through the 1000s. Um, we are now going to move on to the 800. Uh, this is what they call a deluxe, like their deluxe series. Whereas the Hyper series, right, they have three series. I think they only have three series, which is the Deluxe, their older stones, the Hyper, their brand new newest stones, and then the Super Stones, which were in between those two. Um, the Super Stones are all their higher, uh, finer grit ones. So in this case, sorry, in this case, this one is a King 800 Deluxe. Uh, they make these in the in 700, 750, I think, the 800, the 1000, and the 1200. Um, from everything I've come to understand about it, there's not much reason you would ever use the Deluxe over the Hyper, and uh, I have used the 1000 Deluxe, 
and I feel that way as well. I like the hypers universally better. Um, but they don't offer the hypers in less than 100. So if you want something that bridges the lower level gap, uh, this 800 is here for us to take a look at. And I do have the final natural stone that we'll take a look at to do after this one, which is a Natsuya. And that is soaking. And usually that is quoted at around 800 to 1200. Uh, so we'll be able to compare the last final stretch of it and it'll follow suit with everything else so far. So this is our, again, we just did it, the King 1000 Soft. And let's go ahead and try out this 800 Deluxe. Uh, it is definitely the thirstiest of the stones. You can hear pretty immediately, it's definitely more aggressive. As with all of the Deluxe series, uh, it is, you know, definitely removing metal, but it is going to be muddier um, than how fast it removes metal. And the Hyper series and Super Stones don't really do that. They cut as fast as they refresh. This one also kind of can get gummy. You can see that we need to add more water because uh, the abrasive will start getting um, thick. But still not a bad stone, and again, if you want to look at lower level kings, this is really your option. This is probably the one stone that I got in the trade. I don't really foresee keeping. Uh, I think the difference in grit, the two, extra 200 lower, doesn't um, really shine through a whole lot. I mean, it is coarser. Let me just try to dry it off. It is coarser. But it, I don't know if it's appreciably coarser. And you could probably just spend a little bit more time on the 1000 Hyper and make up the difference with just a little bit more effort there. Save yourself from having to have a whole different stone, especially a stone like this that's pretty muddy. You know, you're going to blow through the stone faster than the Hypers <clears throat> would be. But nonetheless, I had it. And uh, that is our 800. And then we will take a look at the, we'll take a look at the Natsuya here. And we will go ahead and make a little bit of slurry to help move things along. So for our reference, this was the last, I know we've looked at it a few times now, but it's always nice right before we do it. This was the, sorry, just drying. This was the last natural stone we did, the Ikarashi, which is usually quoted as a 1,000 to 2,000, but you know, make your own choices here, or make your own decisions, conclusions, there we go. All right, let's see what we get.
So here's what we end up with for this Natsuya. And I do think compared to the other ones, this one is a more, is usually maybe quoted more accurately. This is about, you know, a 1,000 to a 1,500 finish, I think, here. It is nice, it's fairly consistent, but hopefully with the reflections here, it's got definitely some fairly aggressive scratch marks. Even though the pattern is nice and setting us up for success, you can even hear it when it's used. It's definitely a little bit more aggressive than some of the other options we've been looking at. And then again, too, we'll flip it back and forth. Natsuya. King 800. And I would say that their scratches are about equally deep. Maybe the Natsu is still a little shallower, which is why we look at that 1,500 range, I think, is more accurate for it. But it's definitely the coarsest of the naturals that I have uh, to put on the table for us here today. So that leaves us with the remaining king stone that we have to take a look at, the 300. And obviously, um, it out here. Obviously the 300 is a very coarse stone. It is also part of their quote-unquote deluxe lineup, but it even feel, feels pretty uniquely different than the other stones. It's marked differently. Um, and it's, you know, if you're doing some really heavy resetting on your polish, it's been really messed up in the past. Um, you know, for instance, if, if I wanted to redo the Shinogi line here, which I know one of you commented about having to redo, and I probably won't do it, I'm gonna be frank. Uh, this, this knife ends up just kind of being used for test work. I'm not gonna probably spend the time to clean that up, but if I ever did, you know, I would start with a diamond plate and then graduate into this to set me up for the next steps. Um, so yeah, this stone maybe has still more use, even with the hypers than the 800 to 700s do because you know it really br bridges the nice diamond plate gap if you don't have a 140 400 600 diamond plate which would probably be the best right if you just had the diamond plates up to the 600 to 800 mark and then you moved into the 1k hypers and then you could go up to 2k hyper and then maybe transition to nakatoishi stones nonetheless let's take a look at the 800 here again i suppose maybe it's worth now using the natural side to, eh, now nah, we'll just stick with one side being the synthetic. Here is our pre-polish on the 800. Let's go ahead and see what this 300 did, will do for us. And uh, this way, I only have to take one of the sides of this knife all the way down, which then results in a lot of work to fix it back up for future videos. All right, let's see what we get. The stone definitely gives some pretty intense feedback. You can really tell it's cutting. I don't really think we need to do much more than that. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's good enough for our needs here. When you go in reverse order, it's much, you know, it's easier per step because you're not trying to erase scratches, you override them very easily. So here is what our King 300 produces. I'll just try it off a little bit more. And you can definitely see, I mean, it's another, it's a major step up 
um, you know, aggressiveness and depth that it's cutting into it. You can see I slipped there. Oops. Um, you know, as far as natural stones go, this is well below an Omora. It's well below an Anokuza. It's closest to, you know, a Sasaguchi or a Kamato Omora, something like that. It is a really aggressive stone. Those are deep scratches in there. All right. And it's not as muddy as the other deluxes. I mean, it did produce a little bit of mud, but it doesn't kind of fall apart like the other 7, 800, 1,000 deluxes do. Anything that's this color for the deluxes just tends to mud up so fast um, from my limited experience. I don't use, don't use them a lot, that's for sure. But I have had enough experience to know that those um, brick colored ones definitely will uh, fall apart quick on you. Not fall apart, not meaning crack, but just, you know, we saw how it muddied. And then the last one here to just complete our set and make sure I have to spend as much time as possible resetting my knife on this side <laughs> is uh, the 140 diamond plate. So take a look at what the 300 did. Now I will note that this is a little, this is a used 140, still an aggressive diamond plate, but um, it's not as aggressive as it would be like brand new out of the box. They do mellow out a little bit after you use them. So let's see what we get post the 140. Need to wet the knife. sufficient for our needs and no real surprise it is considerably and noticeably coarser than the 300 was all right so we have been through the full range of grits from 140 now to 8,000 and we've taken a look at a lot of the usual suspects in the natural stone world for the Nakatoishi, right, the beginning of the Nakatoishi line and up. Uh, generally speaking, I do suggest people avoid uh, the Aratoishi, the coarsest natural whetstones. The reason for this is because inside a lot of those stones, so if it is an Amakusa or Sasaguchi or one of the other options, um, even an Omora has this problem sometimes. The majority of the grit will be what you want it to be. The majority will be how it normally performs. So, you know, Sasaguchi 300, Omora like a 5 or 600, Amakusa like a, if it's a coarser Amakusa like a 5 or 600. Um, but it will have particles in there that I find, having used those or borrowed them for people to test out, uh, that will be well below what you want. So Sasaguchi might be like a 300 grit stone primarily with a few 80 grit particles, set or 100 grit particles or something in there. So what happens is you spend a lot of time at the next step getting those rogue, you know, lower grit particles out um, and you waste a lot of metal that you would not waste that time in metal if you just used, right, the, the King 300, wherever it is over here, the King 300 that we were looking at. Um, you know, this will have consistent particles all throughout. I find a lot of those coarser natural stones, the, even the good versions of them just have those rogue particles too much, right? If every Nakatoishi we were dealing with was prone to coarse particles, randomly, rogue coarse particles, we would try to skip those too. Um, truth be told though, outside of Altos, 
uh, a lot of Nagatoishi are fine. A lot of them have pretty consistent particle ranges. Altos that have sandy stripes in them, so the brown stripes, those are often the ones with the rogue particles in the Nakatoishi area. And Amakusa, of both the red and white varieties, can frequently have them as well. Uh, but many of the other Nakatoishi are very good, and you know, we can go up to that 1K synthetic grit and then make the jump. And, uh, you know, the, the, this Natsuya is probably the most dubious proposition that I have left if I want to move up to that Hyper 2000. Moving from the Hyper 2000 to this, I think, would be about horizontal. However, this still might have some more shallow scratches, so maybe it's still worth it to do. Generally speaking, though, you know, I think moving from the 2K Hyper to an Ikarashi and then going from there, it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and, you know, I think that would set everybody up for success. And realistically, I think we've covered enough length now that the vast majority of grit ratings you see out there, of course, every stone is different, right? Even Aizu to Aizu, Ikarashi to Ikarashi is different. They all must be tested and evaluated individually. But broadly speaking, a lot of the values you're going to see are sharpening values. And sharpening values, to be frank, it's really difficult. I mean, if you sharpen on a 4K synthetic, and then a 6K synthetic, and blind test someone, I uh, would argue the, the vast majority of people are not going to be able to tell the difference between those two. Uh, right there within the ballpark. Polishing, though, we would be able to tell the difference. We can tell the difference throughout this video. Maybe the 1K to 2K was a difficult difference, but even that, it was, you know, hopefully in video it comes through, but even in difference in person, I can tell. So when you're polishing, it becomes more clear what the grit rating of things are in that world. Now, the way it polishes, though, is not going to be the way it creates microscopic teeth on the edge of the blade. Those are two right, totally different uses of the stone. And as such, someone might not necessarily be inaccurate by saying an Aizu is a 3 to 5k stone. It's just an Aizu is a 3 to 5k stone sharpening, and that's what it does there. Um, I think that's fairly accurate, because, but at the end of the day, that's so subjective. It's so difficult to come up with a formula about what type of grit means what type of edge that, you know, at that point, you got to start asking, well, what stones did you use? What reference point are you using? Um, and of course, it's all relative. You know, I definitely think for Japanese stones, at least, and even the broader natural stones as we get into UK and American stones, it's almost easier to say, is this a coarse middle grit? Is this a fine middle grit? Is this a soft finishing or a hard finishing stone? Done. Like, you know, outside of that, it's really hard to say this is a four, this is a three, this is an eight. It's more about what the use of the natural stone is. And that is exactly why people suggest you don't the grits to the natural stones because per use they're different per stone they're different and you know you can make them be coarse by frequent refreshing with a 140 diamond plate you can make them fine by burnishing the surface there's a lot of options when you use them and that's what makes them so versatile and so fun but also makes them very difficult to classify when you compare it to just you know some like aluminum oxide in a ceramic or otherwise binder. This is simple. We know exactly what's in it and it performs one way. And if it gets clogged, it doesn't burnish. It just stops cutting. You know, they're, they're very different. And you know, that's why synthetics often feel a little soulless and naturals have personality. Um, whether you like that or not, or you just want to get the fastest job done, which your synthetics will always be the fastest job is up to you. Um, so anyway, I hope you found the video useful. I uh, hope it gave some insight into relative grit ratings of these pretty popular stones and just sets the right mindset for your expectations regarding what some of these stones might do. And, you know, this generally plays out through the whole spectrum. If you look at the Japanese natural stone lists of Aratuishi, Nakatuishi, and Awaseido I have on naturalwhatstones.com, it's going to be true for a lot of those things, like a Binsue is technically right a one to one and a half K stone, but it's going to polish kind of similar to that Igarashi did, which, which we wouldn't call a one to one K polish. It's going to be different um, because it's shallower, more consistent. Um, 
So anyway, you know, a lot of it is trial and error. Experience is difficult to replace. Anyway, hopefully this helped, and until next time.